It has been a while since my last official update, so I decided to host another Q&A session and use this opportunity to give a status update. Right now, we are remaking Epic Wars 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in a new engine. And once they're ready, we'll publish them on Steam, and after that, if chance allows, try to port them on mobile. They will be in one launcher, and the bundle will cost $5 on Steam. After that, we will focus on remaking Epic Wars Saga. We have big plans, but the idea is to target mobile platforms, but also have a playable version on PC, either Steam or the web, and the game will be free with in-app purchases, though if you're wondering, Epic Wars 1 through 5 will not have any of those. I do not reveal too many details about the games before they come out, that's not how I roll. I want most of it to remain unspoiled. But I do want to at least share some tidbits about both the games and their development process. Right now, we have made great progress, but there is still plenty more to go. If you're wondering, the game with the most progress is Epic War 2, which we've almost finished by this point, and the game with the least progress is Epic War 5, which some of you were curious about. That game, with all of its mechanics, needs lots of love and attention, so I'm essentially saving it for last. But even with Epic War 5, we've made plenty of foundational progress, and I can't wait to get to the juicy parts. And for those of you curious when the games will be out, we do not have a release date at this point. And we will not have one until the games are almost done, and we can be confident they will launch on time and in good shape. I totally understand those of you who can't wait to see the games come out and play them. But do keep in mind that at this point in time, Epic War is essentially a hobby for me and everyone else involved in the project. We can't quite dedicate as much time to it as we want, but we still want to make them great. And considering this is a 15-year-old series, I will not compromise on quality to get it out sooner. And I will openly admit to some scope creep, where I've thought of features I wasn't originally planning to implement, and made them part of the plan, so now the games are taking a little longer. But, considering I don't have a publisher breathing down my neck, and I'm in a perfect position to release the games as soon as I find them ready, this actually becomes more of a blessing than a curse. I'm working on the games, I get a new idea, and if it's reasonable and benefits the games, why not do it? Overall, almost all of the boring foundational stuff is behind us, and what's left is the fun stuff, like enemy AIs, level design, and balancing. But before we fully release the bundle of Epic Wars 1 through 5, we are going to conduct closed beta tests for every game. And some of you guys are wondering what they're going to entail and how to sign up for them. So, when the time comes, and the games are close enough to being finished, I will announce the beta tests for them one by one, and post links to Google Forms where you can apply to be a beta tester. Only a small number of people will get to beta test each game, perhaps between 5 and 15 people for each of the games, and based on your applications we will choose who gets in. Don't fret if you don't get selected, chances are you're just going to get to play a more polished version of the game when it comes out and have better first impressions. Which is partially why we don't want to include too many people in the beta testing. Because I know you guys will find those pesky bugs and progression issues, and I would rather pretend they were never a thing. Due to the nature of the beta being closed, beta testers will need to sign NDAs and cannot reveal anything they learn about the games, so you can't upload footage of the betas, at least not without my express permission. How different will the Epic War series remake be? Can we also expect new units, much more or longer stages, etc? Elcock. Elcock. How can you say something so incredibly outrageous? I get it. The tank in Epic War 5 is nothing special, but in Epic War 4, and especially Epic War 3? How can you look at a unit that destroys revenge waves, that just tells them, hey, you're not a factor anymore, and the word that comes to your mind is underwhelming? People these days. Will there be new secret achievements or easter eggs? Now, hey, if I tell you they're not gonna be very secret, are they? Uh, please accept my apologies, Mr. Elcock. I have been informed by management that I cannot just skip your question, even with the ridiculous things you say sometimes. So before talking about what the remakes will entail, I will first talk about what they will not entail. 
For those of you wondering about graphical changes and wishing that maybe some of the units could undergo a magical transformation and look more high resolution, unfortunately, remastering so much art, especially when it is as detailed as Epic Wars, would be quite an expensive and time-consuming task. And even if we tried to upscale all sprites through AI tools, it would still take a long time and not really be worth it because a lot of upscaled sprites just look oily and lose that feeling, that nostalgic factor to how things look. This applies most to units, but there are some things like certain backgrounds that might look nicer and still recognizable when upscaled. So the option is on the table, but the visual changes we'll make will be smaller and more down to specific details, such as making the UIs look nicer, making visual effects look smoother, and adding some more visual details and effects where appropriate. And with the maximum FPS increased to 60, even if the games will look somewhat similar, they will still feel so much nicer to play. I've confirmed that myself. So what can you expect? Gameplay, balancing and level design are important priorities for us. And we're taking the time to improve those areas and make the games as fun as they can be, while strengthening every game's unique identity. Yes, you can expect some more levels, and some levels reworked to provide more challenge and not be as quick to beat. We will fix the bugs, as well as add some more things outside of the gameplay. The quality of life improvements we're making are too many to count, but some notable ones include increasing the maximum FPS from 24 to 60, speeding up the base gameplay, reworking UIs both in battle and out of battle to be more convenient, and, something you guys asked about, adding save slots. Then there are things like modding support, something that would be nice to have but we just can't prioritize it yet, and after release, depending on what things are looking like, we may get the chance to add some modding tools. But no guarantees just yet. Will there be a way to use the old UIs again for nostalgia purposes? Unfortunately, not likely. We're updating the UIs to be more functional and in most cases also look nicer. And while yes, it's not gonna feel quite as nostalgic, even if we kept the old UIs, there are other things like the higher FPS and the changes to the levels that will still prevent it from feeling super nostalgic. So I think it's best to keep the current Flash versions of the games around for when we want raw nostalgia, while the remakes will keep part of that nostalgia, but also improve things so that hopefully, in 10 years time, it's the remakes we're nostalgic about. What does Goblin Flesh taste like? Think chicken that has been left in boiling water for far too long. Yeah, not the best taste. Puppy dragon meat is the real delicacy. Will the games be full screen with backgrounds not cropping? This is a topic that has come up in conversations. And here's the thing. Each of these games was made with a specific resolution in mind, and widening it in any significant way would not only mess up some of the UIs, but also show a lot more information on screen at once, in some cases almost the entire battle screen. Even if Flash Player allows exploits like seeing way outside of what you're supposed to see, I think scrolling and gathering information deserves to remain part of the gameplay loop, and keep the games feeling kind of like they did before. Now, I know some people are not fans of black borders, and in our discussions the possibility came up of doing what some other games do, and instead of the borders being black, fill them with epic war-related artwork. Here's an example. Scorpion, one of our community members and YouTubers, made a sketch replacing the black borders with a piece of fan art for Epic War 2, which is linked in the description, and I think there's some merit to it. In fact, if you are an artist, there might be a chance for you to have your Epic War-related art featured in the game. So stay tuned for more information on this in the future. Will the zombie unit appear in any game other than Epic War 3? No, the zombie unit will fall into obscurity and be forgotten to time, which is no less than it deserves. And will the Yeti get buffed in every game it's in? Yes, the Yeti will rise up and take back the lands, ruling for eternity as the one true king of epic war. Some of you guys were wondering about new units, and while we don't have artists and are very limited in making brand new units, there are some possibilities for taking units from one game and having them also exist in another, specifically from Epic War 3 to Epic War 4. And I will tell you this, some of those units might just make it in there. 
and some units you as the player may even get your hands on. But not the Dragon Rider, sorry. Do you have any twists in mind for New Game Plus in Epic War 3? Basically to make it have progressing difficulty rather than regressing. That is definitely an issue. As you play more New Game Plus in Epic War 3, it gets easier, not harder, and that's part of why it feels so repetitive. So, yes, I have a change in mind. Will the Fortnite collab be soon? Sh shush, people aren't supposed to know yet. How much of a role will the Arrow Towers and Heroes play in the remasters? Good question, both the Arrow Towers in Epic Wars 1 and 2, and the Heroes in Epic Wars 3, 4 and 5, need to feel like powerful, valuable tools in the player's arsenal, but also not overshadow what the games are really about, which is not micromanaging your heroes or aiming your arrow tower, it is unit combat. That is the principle I will balance the heroes and the arrow towers around. Considering every game has different approaches, every game will also have different needs, right? Yes! I believe every epic war game has a niche where it can really shine. So. With each of the games, I want to focus on and strengthen what's part of its niche, and this way, each of the games will feel even more unique compared to the others. Also, will you be wanting help with translations to make the remasters for multiple languages? Now, while translations are not something we are working on at the moment, and it will be a while before the games are ready enough that we can focus on translations, I would love to translate the games to multiple languages and make them available for more and more people, because I'm sure there's still many passionate Epic War fans who don't know English very well, but would still love to experience the remakes. This is a conversation we've had a few times in our Discord community, link in the description, and some great people have already come forth offering their help with translations. So, when the time comes, we will set up a way for everyone who's able and willing to help and hopefully make Epic War accessible across the world. Are you still as excited as you were on day one working on the project? Is everything like you thought it was gonna go, or better, or worse? What a great question, Thomas. It's slightly surprising even to me, but yes, I'm still as excited. The things that I'm excited for are a bit different now that I have a more detailed view of what I want to accomplish. I get excited about things I didn't even know I wanted to implement, and I do get burnt out and occasionally benefit from taking a bit of a break from working on and thinking about the games. But overall, I am still having a blast, and while it's taking more time than I thought it might take, I also get more and more excited about showing it to you guys. As for the soundtrack, I want to keep the music we have, as it is both nostalgic and epic. But some of the tracks, especially the older ones, were compressed to lower the file size of the games, and for most of those tracks, we have and will use the higher quality versions. Here's an example. Also, we may or may not add a few new tracks, and potentially remix one of the games. Which one? Who knows? Will Epic War 3 get multiplayer? Not anytime soon. Will Epic War 2 be actually enjoyable? Certainly. Epic War 2 has fantastic gameplay, but a lot of people take issue with its pacing, me being one of them. So expect it to feel quite different. Although, with how theatrically some people hate the current version of the game, I wouldn't be surprised if a faction were to arise, perhaps with an equine leader, who rallied against enjoying any future past and present version of the game. Well, I guess they're out of luck. Are there any upcoming Discord events like the festive one? Last one was extremely entertaining and made lots of people revisit the games, you are so right, Sevs. The last festive event surpassed my expectations, and we should definitely host more. And next time, instead of just replaying the games, perhaps we'll find a way to spice things up. Next, Dogrog has some questions. Anything about some game that has completely changed so far? Actually, yeah, the structure of one of the games has seriously changed. Put your best guess in the comments for which one it is, whereas the other games have only had smaller changes to their structure. Any favorite change that has been made so far? Oh boy, I have made some changes I am proud of. I guess one change I'll highlight is the end from Epic War 2. I've always loved its design and the musical accompaniment, and while in the current game it is quite a flawed boss fight, and it took some pain and suffering to get right, 
I'm very proud of the changes we've made and how they affect both its gameplay and atmosphere. And of course you have to ask about units. And actually, I'm glad you asked. None of the units changed as much as what you're describing. I mean, with limited art capabilities, it just doesn't make much sense to make a change like that. However, we do have some units that changed in one significant way or another. In the description is a link to a Google form where you can enter your guess on which unit from Epic Wars 1, 2, and 3 changed the most. From the time this video comes out, you have a week to make your guesses. For each unit you get right, you will get a secret sneak peek of the remasters. Good luck! What do you think about nuclear energy? I think its discovery was a pretty big bang in the Goblin Scientist community. Is it possible to give some of the Epic War characters bonus lore? What I mean is going more in depth into Vigraf's story in some way. Vigraf has been gay all along. Or at least that's what some would have you believe. We will be expanding the lore and shedding more light on some characters, so stay tuned. Are there going to be names for the original soundtrack from the Epic War franchise? Well, some of the tracks used have been published by their artists, mainly Maestro Rage, and have names attached to them. For example, the Epic War 3 battle tracks, if you didn't know, are named The Fantastic Spirit and The Formidable Push. But some, like the Epic War 4 soundtrack, have no names that we know of. Maybe you guys will have ideas on good fan names for them. Next we have a question from pausetimistc slash lulan, who is one of our moderators and a passionate member of the community. He asks, regarding unit balancing for Epic War 3 through 5, will all the units have considerable worth throughout all stages of the game, or might there be units that excel early on and can be forgotten later on? Example being how tanks feel strong in Epic War 4 early on, but become a fun meme later on, rather than actually contributing meaningful impact to winning a stage. So next we have a question by Critter256. Will you make Epic War 5 spells stack in the remake? That's a very nice question. It's insightful, while answering it doesn't spoil too much about the games. My current thoughts are that yes, you will be able to make them stack, but also the utility spells, regen, rage, and shield will be harder to abuse to such good effect. For how immensely powerful these spells are, they're surprisingly some of the cheapest spells in the game, which makes me think that perhaps ArtLogic Games balanced or tried to balance the game for the early game, the normal stages, and that's why in the harder stages everything falls apart so quickly. Oh hey, a rare question about Epic War Saga. Do you plan to change Epic War Saga's grinding? Yes. Right now, the grinding is an absolutely mandatory part of Epic War Saga. You will hit walls and won't be able to progress without grinding, whereas with enough of it, any mid-game level becomes trivial. We want to make repeating levels more optional, specifically for the people who enjoy it, while the rest can progress through the game and explore without having to repeat levels too much. So, how's the Lobster Titan doing? Oh, it's doing great. Graduated college, got a wife and three kids. And from what it's told me, it took up weightlifting as a hobby. Give it enough time and it will be the most powerful Titan, so we better not wait too long before adding it and get it? Get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it possible to implement a difficulty selection in any of the Epic War games, excluding Epic War 4? So, this depends. I'm not a huge fan of difficulty selection, because it asks players who haven't even tried the game yet what difficulty they want, and imagine someone playing on medium. If they find it too hard and have to switch to easy, it feels like admitting defeat. And if they've beaten the game on medium, will they try hard? Only if they really love the game, or if there are meaningful differences between medium and hard. And by meaningful differences, I mean Something simple and uninspired, like 50% more health for the enemies, is not gonna cut it. That's why I love how Epic War 4 does it, where it actually changes the enemies on the levels, depending on the difficulty mode. Remember level 11, with a bunch of magical troops on normal mode, all being gone on hard mode and replaced with one angel. And on Epic, we get some of the magical troops, some angels, and a unique enemy to go along with it. 
I think that is a perfect example of Epic War 4's level structure. And because the levels are different, it's fine that you have to beat them on normal first, then hard, then epic. That's the kind of difficulty separation that I like. But take Epic War 5, does it need one when it already has normal levels, extra levels and trial levels to serve as difficulty separation? That's why I'm not convinced that the Epic War games that don't currently have different difficulty modes for its levels would really benefit from them. Each of the games has its own structure and its own way it handles difficulty, and while there may be issues with the specific implementations, I do not believe this type of difficulty option is the answer. I'm glad you're keeping the money I lent you after I stole it from that bank a week ago. Thanks Snoop, I too am glad at that. Now, you've probably noticed that each person asking a question had a chance to tell us their favorite unit in the series. And now, the time comes to tally them up and see which units are fan favorites. With half a vote, and half a vote means someone split their vote between two units, so with half a vote we have the Angel and the Phantom Knight. With one vote we have a tie between a lot of units, Vigraf the Red, the Skull Knight, the Great Diablos or Earth Dragon, the Black Dragon, Red Dragon Ignis, the Phoenix, the Lamia, the Elf Protector from Epic War 2, the Dragon Rider, Centaurs, Taurus, Elite Hobbits, Goblins, Zombie, Bajaj, and the Undead Beast King from Epic War 5. With two votes, we have a tie between only two units. The Lord of Fire or Inferno from the various games, and the Sky Dragon from Epic War 4. We then have another tie with 2.5 votes each. We have Bale or the Lord of Hell from the various games, and the Succubus. We have three dishonorable mentions for units that got one non-serious vote. Engineer, whatever that means, HD Sun Wakong, and Zeppelin of Mighty Gargantuanus. I guess I can't argue. And the winner, sweeping the poll with four votes, is the White Tiger from Epic War 5. Or maybe Saga, but I think it's Epic War 5. And you know, even if it's not the most obvious winner pick, I get it. I love him too. He almost represents my childhood memories with Epic War 5. And that might be the case for those of us who voted for him. I'm quite happy that they are going to revive the Epic War saga. The truth is, I don't have many questions since I prefer to wait to be surprised, though that works out great for me because I prefer to wait to surprise you. And it is you, all of you, that's kept me going all this time. I genuinely can't wait to get the remakes done, release them, and be there to see you guys experience them for the first time. There's so much exciting stuff that I can't wait to see your reaction on. And just like I, a fan, was able to revive and continue work on the series, it is all of us fans who can keep it going long into the future. I can't wait to see what challenges you guys come up with for each game. I can't wait to see who snatches each speedrun world record. I can't wait to see more and more people who have never played the games in the past, discovering them, seeing a passionate community around them, deciding to give them a try, and joining us, all brought together by a shared love for the games. I have big hopes for the future and I would die to make them happen. So, thank you for being along for the ride, and let's experience the future we have in store for us together. Eek wine.